and a warm welcome to a virtual session on Tech to Sustain, Conversations for a Greener Tomorrow. My name is Santosh Jairam and uh, I'm the Global Head Sustainability with HCL Technologies. Today, this panel, it comprises of a series of six episodes with industry leaders across the ecosystem of retail and CPG industry. We will be interacting with them on how the role of technology can drive sustainable consumerism and how the strategic decisions of the right technology adoption are playing a catalytic role in addressing their organization's drive and commitment towards sustainability. I start by welcoming these leaders, the thought leaders from retail and the CPG companies who believe that sustainability is a compelling business lever and technology is critical to help navigate through this changing dynamics of the industry ecosystem. So in no particular order, uh, let me first introduce John Amend. Um, John, uh, ex-Vice President at Mars, a role overseeing responsible sourcing, science, research and development, sustainability, corporate affairs related to the COCO, uh, for Mars uh, Wrigley Confectionery. Um, next, we have Justin Honanan. He is the global head of uh, worldwide go-to-market consumer products for Amazon. Justin has spent a majority of his career in the consumer foods and retail, both from the customer side, uh, Coca-Cola, Georgia Pacific, as well as on the technology consulting side with Accenture, Teradata, etc. Uh, we also have another John, John Toner, uh, Vice President of United Fresh Produce. Uh, John has helped bring the produce industry together as Vice President Convention and Industry Relations at the United Fresh Produce Association. Alongside, I have a colleague of mine, Vijay Verma, uh, Executive Vice President of Retail and CPG Vertical in Excel America. And uh, we are also happy to have Brooke Connor, who is former Chief Information Security Officer with Estee Lauder Companies. Currently, he serves as the Chief Information Officer for the Hawaii State Department of Education, where his team is implementing some major digital transformations around finance, students' information, collaboration and support systems uh, for every public school in the state of Hawaii. Um, alongside, we have uh, Fani, Fani Bura. Um, he works on the product design and transformation with Albertsons companies as a uh, transformational and product design leader. Fani leverages the power of data and analytics to build value, drive growth, streamline cost, and help achieve organizational strategic uh, objectives. And uh, we also have uh, Praveen Motru, uh, who is Vice President and Chief Enterprise Architect with Moss. In this role, he uh, works to drive the enterprise digital transformation. Uh, he was recently named a top global transformation leader where, uh, by Constellation's Business Transformation BD150 list. Uh, so thank you all uh, for joining and really look forward towards, uh, uh, you know, exciting uh, discussions and insights as to how technology can accelerate uh, sustainability for tomorrow. So welcoming all of you and uh, maybe to start kick off the sessions. Um, since I started the introduction with John, I would start with you as uh, you have spent a significant part of your career with Mars. Um, the food and confectionery conglomerate. And we all know that cocoa was one of those first commodities that went through the uh, sustainable sourcing frameworks. So right now it's a new crop, you know, cross section when it comes to the, the uh, field of sustainability. So what according to you are the key elements of sustainability as viewed through the lens of the industry as uh, at present? Uh, both from the risk perspective as well as from the responsibility perspective. John, over to you. Super. Thank you very much, uh, Santosh. Hope everybody can uh, hear me here. And uh, hi, everybody. Very, very pleased and honored to be here on this call. Very timely call given uh, 
uh, all that's been happening in the last couple of weeks in Glasgow at the COP26. Um, it's, a, it's a great provocation, a great question, actually. The, the reality is uh, this is a, a key, key time for sustainability in, in consumer goods. Um, I think that what we're seeing, uh, you, you specifically asked about risks and responsibilities, and I think that uh, we actually should talk about risks, responsibilities, and opportunity as well. Uh, this is a, a fundamental moment to grab uh, the opportunity and to, to take the lead. Um, from a risk perspective, clearly um, this has been evolving dramatically in the last few years. So many, many years back at the beginning when sustainability was still uh, in its infancy, let's say, um, risk was really coming from a few um, probably maverick activists who were calling out the impacts that uh, commodities and uh, raw material production was having on the environment or in, 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 on smallholder producers and communities. Um, that's changed dramatically, right? So today the activists are still there, obviously, and gaining in, in, in their uh, presence and ability to influence. But we're also seeing consumers becoming more engaged uh, and more active and uh, making choices based on sustainability criteria. Uh, although I would argue that that is uh, in its, uh, it's developing still. We still don't see them always putting their money where their mouth is. And we'd like to see more of that to drive change. Uh, but what's really happening, and uh, Justin on the call here will call, that, call me out if I don't say this, is that customers are beginning to step up right, and understand that they have a role to play. Uh, to represent their consumers' needs and beliefs here. So uh, customers are beginning to shape what uh, branded companies like Mars and others need to, need to do. Uh, and really, I think the, the game changer is that regulators are stepping in, right? So what we're seeing right now is that the, the government regulators and, and law writers are uh, understanding that um, self-regulation hasn't really worked as well as it was hoped it would and that we need to get more uh, uh, clearer and more uh, teeth into regulation to ensure that uh, the global supply chains actually do comply with and make uh, changes to how they do business. So I think that that's the sort of uh, background on risk, right? Uh, as, as the risks become greater from a regulatory standpoint, then the, the consumer goods businesses are gonna have to change more aggressively. Um, and as consumers become more engaged and customers become more engaged, there's a risk to the brand's reputation as well that is becoming increasingly more important, right? Uh, but I think that from a responsibility perspective, there's also been quite a lot of change. So in the, in the past, responsibility of uh, companies was uh, fundamentally defined as a responsibility to their shareholders, right? Ensuring that their shareholders made the most profit out of their operations. That's changing and it's becoming now clearer that the responsibility is to all stakeholders that those companies relate with, right? And so we see some of the very big asset and fund managers globally beginning to call that out, right? And make it very clear that they have an expectation of the companies in their portfolio to really take into account all the stakeholders, right? And we see even uh, conversations around how uh, the responsibility for social capital and environmental capital or natural capital can get built into the PL of a company so that it's, uh, it's really the responsibility of that company to care for those elements in addition to the financial aspects of their operations. And then I mentioned opportunity quickly, and I'll um, just touch on that. I think that uh, the opportunity is uh, to be on the front foot here, right? So uh, today, you still can differentiate yourself by being a leader in the sustainability space and uh, consumers will begin to choose brands that are sustainable and have the right sustainable credentials over brands that don't, especially uh, as um, uh, awareness and responsibility and accountability for climate change gets more and more uh, mainstream as we see it happening. Um, but it won't, have, it won't be there forever, right? That opportunity will disappear as more and more companies jump on that same bandwagon. And as this becomes a table stakes approach rather than a differentiating approach. And so uh, I would say that the, the opportunity lies in leading the herd and leading the pack and being a driver of uh, sustainability rather than a follower of sustainability initiatives and transformations. Thanks, John. And I think uh, any opportunity that is not capitalized is also turning into risk, right? That, that's exactly right. I mean, at, at the end of the day, um, it's either a risk to your reputation or it's a risk to your competitive capabilities in the in the in the market, right? 
right. I think the one other thing I would, if you if you don't mind, just adding here before I hand over. Um, sure. I think the, the critical thing to understand is that accountability for sustainability is no longer within your own operations, right? So, I mean, Praveen knows this. We've been going through a huge transformation in the last few years in Mars in our own factories and figuring out how to uh, embed sustainability for water, for carbon footprints, etc., in our own operations. But the reality is for a company like Mars, 90% of our carbon footprint sits outside our operations in our agricultural supply chains, right? And therefore, if we are going to be fully sustainable and, uh, and accountable, we've got to look at our extended supply chain and make sure that we're looking at our tier one, tier two, and tier three suppliers. And we consider ourselves accountable for intervening all the way up and down that supply chain end to end. Right. So what was the externalities uh, earlier are no more externalities. They are pushed to be internalized by the companies. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, maybe with that, what uh, I want to move on is, uh, you know, take the same question to Fanny, uh, Fanny Bura, who is the IT executive and transformation leader for one of the largest retailer and supermarket chain, Albertson companies. So Fanny, I mean, you are in between the producer and the consumer and uh, there might be some trends which you are seeing um, so uh, how do you how do you believe what are your views on how the retailers or retail organizations see the key elements of sustainability through the lens of both the industry as well as the stakeholder expectations yeah thank you santosh it's great to see the panelists uh, sustainability is everyone's business no one organization department or industry can solve the problem it's great to see numerous leaders come together to continuously raise the bar on sustainability stra strategies and using technology as a force for good in the world, we can build a more sustainable future. Coming back to the roundtable conversation, looking through the lens of retail and customer expectations, um, I'll begin with um, some statistics, again, based on the research conducted by leading analytic firms and um, analytic firms, they spend a lot of time researching and they give us a um, lot of insights on what makes sense for the future. We live in a digital uh, driven world today and uh, there's sea of systems powering this world, but yet grocery stores worldwide account for more energy consumption than the data centers across the globe. And most retail and grocery brands are still running on fossil fuels powered energy. Our fresh foods, meat production, and transportation ecosystems still account for 25% of global emissions. So when it comes to waste, 40% of it happens at the retail and consumption stage of the supply chain. But again, these are not the challenges, but with a sustainability driven mindset, these are the numbers that gives us an opportunity the resiliency that we can build in the business model. Rather than getting intimidated, these provide opportunities for us. And these numbers are true opportunities where consumers um, are looking towards. If you look at the current generation, Gen Z, millennials, they are um, an income, again, um, high income shoppers. They are looking for more sustainable products and they are okay to go far probably six to 10 miles just to go to a green store and shop for green products. So this tells us that consumer market is demanding and they are more lean, leaning towards sustainable products. And one thing that uh, they want to know is product authenticity. John has talked about the production, the cost for production, and he talked about uh, the key elements of getting, that go into production. So that product authenticity and product traceability have become key elements for um, identifying the sustainability of a, any product. Customers want to know the end-to-end -end product life cycle. What has gone into the production? How was it distributed? How was it being marketed at the retail? And how is it being recycled? Based on that, the statistics say 53% of people are likely to consider brands that are transparent product transparency that John has talked about that has become a game changer, product authenticity and transparency. And 94% of consumers say that they are more likely to be loyal to a brand that offers transparency. So that's the product traceability. And the food traceability market is estimated to be worth over $14 billion. 
in um, 2021 and even more in 2022. That's the forecast. And food safety is another key element. And uh, if you look at the ESG reporting, it plays a key role in the financial performance of the retail and grocery business. And therefore tracking sustainability KPIs plays a dual role. It's illuminating the impact areas while setting targets and vocalizing the achievements to our stakeholders, customers, and partners. So there's, there's a lot of opportunity here, but only 20% of retail players are able to bring those numbers to the table. So there's still a major gap, which um, opens up doors for a lot of opportunities for the retail business. And again, pandemic has changed our um, dynamics, how we operate um, and sustainability has become number one priority for over 75% of leaders. And that became very critical um, in the current space. Yeah, I think the last two years I've seen a significant uh, uptake on sustainability interest, right, Funny, And um, yes, what you talked about in terms of traceabilities and many of those things, and we believe at HCL as well that there is a lot of technology that can do to make the journey from what we call the farm to fork more sustainable. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, thanks to John and Fanny to have cemented those views what we have.